Well, my friends, my name is Darren Gertis, and here are three big stories for today, Sunday, April 14th. So the Russians have changed their tactics about how they're going to go after the, uh, the power grid, and this is just kind of a recap of what they've done. Over the past few years, they went after energy infrastructure, but what they were doing was kind of scattershot. Ukraine survived the uh, assault thanks to Western air defense systems and energy-saving measures. Russia had renewed this onslaught only recently. Had they taken this approach uh, six months ago, as it was going into winter, this could have been extremely bad. But so their tactics changed from uh, being scattershot to being far more precise and concentrated down to a single target. Ukraine's biggest energy provider company, uh, they said on Thursday that Russia had caused serious damage to two of its plants and that approximately 80% of the power generating facilities it runs has been destroyed by Russian airstrikes. Now that does not mean that it was 80% across the country, but they're targeting now. And so as they get better and better at targeting, it's going to get more difficult for Ukraine to keep the lights on. Okay, next story. Uh, so German Chancellor Olaf Scholz came through again, and I got to give him credit for that. Uh, Germany has decided to transfer to Ukraine another additional Patriot system and missiles to complement its existing air defense systems. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky said following a conversation with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, I'm grateful to the Chancellor for the decision to supply another additional Patriot system to Ukraine and missiles to complement the existing systems. Thank you for your leadership. They really need it. They need it desperately. And so there were one out of seven necessary before the EU Council budget can proceed. Uh, next, Russia is sure to lose in Ukraine, reckons a Chinese expert on Russia. Now, this doesn't mean that this is what's going to happen, but this expert had some interesting thoughts. So, Anton Gurashenko summarized four reasons the Russian Federation will lose to Ukraine, according to Feng Yun. Uh, the first is the level of resistance and national unity showed by Ukrainians, which has been extraordinary. It really has been extraordinary. Second is international support for Ukraine, which, though recently falling short of expectations, still remains broad. Much of the world is still behind Ukraine. The third factor is the nature of modern warfare, a contest that turns on a combination of industrial might and command, control, communications, and intelligence systems, and they're just not up to speed with that. And the final factor is information. This is the big one to my mind. When it comes to decision making, Vladimir Putin is trapped in an information cocoon. Thanks to his, him being in power so long, the Russian president and his national security team lack access to accurate intelligence. Remember, they thought it was three days or thought it would be three weeks or what have you. The system that they operate lacks an efficient mechanism for correcting errors. Like in the United States, Republicans need Democrats and Democrats need Republicans because the other side will correct them if they make an error or if they're running off the rails or becoming corrupt. The other side's pointing it out and yelling all day long, see, look at these crooks over here. So Putin does not have that kind of mechanism because an authoritarian regime does things quite differently. His conclusion is that Russia will be forced to withdraw from all occupied Ukrainian territories, including Crimea. I'm looking forward to that day. Kiev has proven to Moscow that it is... Kiev has proven that Moscow is not invincible, so a ceasefire under the Korean scenario is ruled out, like partitioning the country. Now, I'd like to believe that, but unless they get the support, this is becoming an increasingly likely proposition. But I think they will get the support. It may be very late, but I think they'll get it. The war is a turning point for Russia. It has consigned Putin's regime to broad international isolation. And so Russia has become the junior partner to China. Mr. Putin may recently have been re-elected, but he faces all kinds of possible black swan events. So there is an undercurrent of all kinds of problems, and that, that includes these. So listen to this. After the war, Ukraine will have the chance to join both EU and NATO, while Russia will lose former Soviet republics because of Putin's aggression there. They see it as a threat to their sovereignty and territorial integrity. I don't know what's going to happen on the other side of this, but with a weakened, centralized in core in Russia, I think you might see either former pieces of Russia or former Soviet satellites really bolt. You're seeing this happen with Armenia right now. Um, the war, meanwhile, has made Europe wake up to the enormous threat that Russia's military aggression poses to the continent's security and the international order. Last couple of things. Matt Gates on Twitter, if we send billions to Ukraine because of this Iranian attack, the terrorists win. Oh. 
and just Gates. I, I just, I, oh, okay. Anyway, last thing. Uh, this is the two-year anniversary of the Moskva cruiser becoming the Moskva submarine. So happy birthday to the Moskva. All right, that's all that I have. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and the coffees. Thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.